country, traveling this world, man. Welcome to this C Stand Up uh, interview. Thank yes, you, sir. thank you for being a part of this, man. Uh oh, your phone is acting funny. Karen Foster. Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Let me get back. All right, here we go. There we go. Come on. Let these fucking dogs outside. I Come saw, on. I know you got some rats or something, don't you? Yeah, I got two rats and a little one. A little one. <laughs> a little, a little, uh, little, little chin food, little piece of shit dog. That know. tells tells the other dogs what to do. <laughs> Pretty much. She the Pretty boss. Much. <laughs> That's what always That's, That's what's up, man. It's good to see your face, brother. Yeah. Been a little while. Yeah, man. Yeah, brother. It has been. Good to I see know, you man. too, man. How's things in Chicago? How's things in Chicago? Man, they they pretty good actually. Uh, you know, it is Chicago. it is Chicago, so it's still people getting killed. Even though we on uh, stay at home order, we didn't got twenty three people got killed during this. I'm like, man, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Them niggas shouldn't have been coughing. Say it again. Your phone is acting funny. Them, I said them them cats should not have been coughing. That's how they got shot. Oh uh, no. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> I generally try to stay out of their way. I don't care what they talking about. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's probably make better. Make sure make sure you got a good signal, man. All right, how's that? It looked good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you. Can you hear me? Everything seems to be good. Okay, there we go. I can hear you. We're good. That's awesome, man. Hey, Brother, well, um, again, thank you for doing this uh, interview with me, man. My little, sure. uh, my little contribution to the content on the internet. See, stand up is my agency that I, you know, do bookings for, and you know, all of that, man. So it's it's been pretty solid. Well, <laughs> it ain't no fashion critics in this, so <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter how you uh, how your uh, ascot looks. <laughs> That's what's up. Supremium. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. So check it out, man. Just so uh, I'm not sure if everybody that's watching this knows you. You're famous to me, man. I know who you are, but give the people a little taste, of, not a taste like in jokes, but tell tell them a little bit more about yourself, man. I know you hail out of Florida. You've been doing well, comedy I'm, for a little while. Well, you know, man, I come from the same, uh, same background as you, man. I'm a Midwest kid, originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Right. Went to, L went to L.A., did my thing. Now I'm in uh, South Florida because I got kids, and uh, yeah, man, it's been it's been a it's been a journey, man, and that's uh, that's the best way I can describe it because there ain't no one thing that defines you in this business, you know. No, no, no. Just no. work begets work. You 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 do things, you get things. I mean, I've been to over 30 countries with the U.S. military, doing yeah. tours, clubs, colleges, TV shows, a website, lahardy.com. I'm on YouTube. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm that guy that you've seen radio, on somewhere. Radio. You know, I, yeah, I remember you were doing radio with DL for a little while. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it's dope. I enjoy yeah. uh, everything, and now you you kind of um, you kind of uh, are kind of marketing that uh, black dad thing, man. I, I honestly I'm, look, look at that. I'm doing I'm doing that a little bit. Um, I'm more doing promotion and production for other shows, kind of like what you're doing, man. We've been in this so long, you know, you, you got to start bringing other people along with you and doing some things a little bit differently. Yeah. So, you know, things just changed up dramatically with them saying that uh, they're not going to have cruise lines until July, August. Yeah. I was just getting on the cruise again, so... <sighs> It is what it is. But yeah, you know that what? was a good check, boy. <laughs> but you know what? At least I'm not one of them cats that was getting them checks and depending on them checks, and yeah. now you ain't getting them checks. Yeah, it's a few of them I know. I put a couple of cats on that, uh, on the cruises, because I, I couldn't, they, like, I never took the time to get that hour clean and that hour dirty separately and right. videotape it. Now, I can right. do them, but videotaping them and then having to tape, worthy of sending was always my little hey excuse right i don't feel it. i don't so, feel uh it. so i passed the email on to a couple of brothers and uh they got on and everything and i like seeing it you know right on. in cabo black men you know traveling all the way to alaska on somebody else's dime and you know they bring their families on the cruises and stuff it seemed to be cool 
I just always, the other part of me was, uh, you know, back when I met you, I was on the road real uh, heavy, right? So right. I was probably doing at least 33 weeks a month away from the, uh, you know, my family and everything. It got yeah. strange to me, man. It was too much. I, I felt like I was weird, you know? So I back Well, you know, you go, you go through that period, too, where it's like you're working to get work, and you'll take almost anything, and then after you've been doing it as long as we have, that take it take anything thing is not is is not as uh is not as crucial anymore. Yeah, and not now, exciting. <laughs> not at all. I mean, at this point in the game, I work where I want to work, when I want to yeah. work. Yeah. Um, it's not just about whether or not I make the money, because I'm not coming out unless there's a certain amount of money anyway. Right. But I'm not. But I'm not begging for that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, I saw congratulations. Uh, your chicken thing was going well, man. Dude, we, uh, I had the funky chicken, ch fried chicken chops and waffles. It was up in 2017. We went out in 2018. As a matter of fact, as we speak, I'm working on a new spot right now. I thought I saw that. Yeah, I thought you was yeah. opening up uh, another one soon, you know. We, we, look, we looking to do that, man, because I want to bring you down here because we're going to do chicken chops, waffles, comedy, and jazz. I want the whole thing. <laughs> That's cool. Because <laughs> if I you remember, when we, the last time I think we worked together was in Chicago. It was me, you, and um, oh, what's that dude? <laughs> Horrible birds, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. He and yeah. I, he and I fell out because of you, man. <laughs> what? Yeah, man, because he was bombing, and I had got yes, him was. that job. Yeah, he was. I he got him that. Too. I got him that gig. He was bombing, and then I told him, you know, because he had he he only had like seven minutes of jokes, and you know he was supposed to do thirty. Right. So then he was trying to stretch that seven minutes, and I and then you came to me and was like, "Uh, fuck your boy doing," <laughs> and I was like, "Come on, man, you making me look bad, dude." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and yeah. The, and the management at that time, because remember, it was actually in Wal in Milwaukee. It yeah. was at that strip club, club comedy yeah. club. Right. And I was like, they little house, uh, you know, I had a month, uh, once a month there with them. So I was yeah. in the house see, on the first right. month, first month, uh, week of the month. Man, and, and and the dude got mad at me, man, stopped talking to me for about, shit, about four or five months. I mean, he had just started to get popular. And, and to, to be honest with you, I hate to even go here, but I told him about the damn NBC diversity thing. He had forgot. I said, hey, man, come. That's how he blew up. Okay. We started to get, you know, and then after that, it was just me and him, the last two dudes. They wanted a black dude. They picked the younger dude. I'm, I ain't mad at him. I want him to be right. happy. Right. But you were the catalyst, yeah. Uh -huh, that's funny. <laughs> I we cool that. now. We 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 come, we somewhat cool now. But you know, he's blown. Dude, up. it was it was it was funny because he was bombing and still trying to tell them pitch sell sell them pigeon t shirts. <laughs> yeah, hey, you gotta make that money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a wild week. I remember that shit. Yeah, that was it, was, it was funny, man. That was yeah. a cool club, man. You know that club shut down. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I worked with uh, Bridget the Midget there. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I I worked with her. My I don't even remember where when. I think it was a Comedy Zone gig too. At four. Man, Lord. she used to get hammered and talk a lot of shit. Did she? Oh man, <laughs> she scared she scared the shit out of me, man. Well, you she got in my face and was she was talking shit and whatnot. Them little arms and little hands. I was yeah, yeah. You hit it? Maybe. No, <laughs> no. I was, I was. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, that's some pussy I was scared of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fucking <laughs> with her, I felt like I was fucking a pedophile, man. That's yeah, just, that's just, what that's that's kind of what I think when people be talking about they want to really. Now I'll play and say, yeah, let me hit a midget, and you know I will tell a joke, but. Yeah, you know, trying it. You you got some you got some social issues if you really want to mess with midget. Yeah, yeah, and she was drunk. She was <laughs> drunk and talking. You know, just just it was just weird. It was yeah. just weird. Yeah. It was just weird. Hey so, man, that's cool. But, but you but you were were you were featured with her or it was a co headliner? No, no, I was working. You know how I had they had the uh, the, the uh, strip club was upstairs and we were yeah. downstairs. She was upstairs, and I was just, I just I just I just hung out with her for a little bit. Oh, okay. Because remember, they had the they had the strip club on one floor, and the comedy was on another floor. Yeah, but why was the comic at the strip club? She was up there chasing women. Oh no no no! I went up there. I went I went up and was checking them out after my show. 
oh, and, okay. before, and before my show. Okay. Because that, you know, that's where the women were. So it was, fuck it, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, you, wait a minute. You're talking about Bridget the Midget, the porn queen. Yeah. Oh, I thought you was talking about that comic, that blonde chick. Oh, no, I'm talking about Bridget the motherfucking midget. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah she scared the shit out of me, man. I believe you, boy, because yeah. she, man, she a uh, monster on the porns, dude. <laughs> she, yeah, she yeah. She ego up, dude. Yeah, and, and you know, she's so, she's so little, yeah. but, but she talk a lot of shit. Oh, and I'm sure she, she could back it up too. I mean, she. Uh, I, I, she hey, might have backed Google, it up. Google Bridget the midget and Mandingo. <laughs> oh hell! <laughs> they oh, put your oh, ego oh. in your pocket. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we both did. <laughs> yeah, boy, you ain't you ain't doing Ooh. nothing with that. Yeah. Oh shit. man. <laughs> you was right to be scared. I wouldn't even shit. <laughs> Dude, she 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 came at me. I ain't gonna lie. She came I, at yeah. a brother. Hey man, hey, I I don't understand it. You know, she get it all day at her job. So what she want <laughs> extra for? <laughs> yeah, but hey but man, this, uh, you know? this virus is trippy, man. I went out and I uh, I'm working a little regular kind of job now. I just when I got an Instacart job, I'm doing delivery shit. Yeah, I you know everything. Yeah. Everything's canceled. Uh, I did my first one of those today. I just got a new job at some place that uh, by the time this airs uh, in a month, month or so, I'll probably be fired from that job. Um, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be temporary, man. You know us. Yeah, we, yeah, man. So, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this, man. So, what do you think the plan is gonna be for uh, comics? Because you've been in it long enough to kind of ride some of the other ways, but this one is such a a big wave, man. How do we survive this? Man, everybody's going to have to do something a little bit different. I mean, I already started uh, the 26th next week um, doing a show. Uh, it's going to be four of us with no people, and we're going to Facebook Live it. Okay. And then in another two weeks, I got a producer. We're doing a three-camera shoot in a club with no people. Uh, it's going to be a TV shoot with three cameras, yeah. and uh, we're going we're to try to sell it after the fact. Okay. I did run into this um, system where you can live stream, but people can actually pay for it, too. So, That's what we're trying to do for next week. Okay. That's, That's cool, what we're man. trying to do next week. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, it's just going to be creating creating different mediums and creating different things. Like, I don't know if you saw, um, what's the dude out of Washington? Oh, Jesus. Man, I'm just, my, uh, I can't even remember my, can't remember. A comedian? Nothing You're talking about a comedian yeah. out of Washington? Yeah. Yeah, um, damn, I can see his face too. Black, yep. You talking he about the air? No, he just opened a comedy club out there in in, uh, in Washington, the state, Washington oh, State. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar. Oh, yeah, you know this cat. Oh, what is his name? Uh, anyway, he opened up. He opened I know up Nate own... Jackson just opened That's up. That's who so... I'm talking about. That's oh, who I'm talking Nate, about. okay, yeah. Nate, Nate did, a, did a show, he charged 10 bucks a head, and he did a show just to himself. Probably a couple, couple, three weeks ago. Okay, online. Online, strictly online. You had to pay for it, pay per view. Okay, that's awesome, man. Good for him. I'm actually uh, supposed to be interviewing him uh, in a few days. Uh, well, in a few little while too. Um, the cat's just an, uh, a serious hustler. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man. He got that. He added that street to the deal, and uh, he's doing his thing, man. I'm proud of him. Um, and you know, I, I hope to, I hope to be able to open up with something like that too. I don't know why. I think we'll eventually get back to the point where we can all intermingle. You know, I have my conspiracy theory uh, beliefs about what's really happening here um, with this COVID virus, why it was released, and was it uh, mechanically done to create a place where we have to answer to every, to have to answer to a system, you know? So that's a brief on my theory. Uh, but eventually, even the people in charge are going to have to relent on uh, controlling everything so so uh, so powerfully, right? Because they got to make their money. And if people can't go <clears throat> pick the cotton, <laughs> ain't going to be no shirts and shit, right? Well, you know, and the other part of that is over 90% of the people that catch it do survive. It's not like you catch it and you fall out. 
Right. You know, it's it's definitely catching a segment of the person of the per population, which down here in Florida is a lot of these older folks in communities where they all live close to each other. Yeah. And uh, you know. Yeah, our government has proven they don't give a shit about us. So you know, California yeah. about to do their own thing. They about to buy all the products for themselves. Really? And that's kind of what's going what's going to happen. I think with comedy, you're going to start having people. Everybody going to be out doing their own thing, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what's the best way to get the money in without having to have three thousand people in the same room. True, true. I hope we can get back to the point where we can have three thousand because. I only had that a couple of times, and it felt good. <laughs> you know Dude, it it's, uh, makes your dick hard. You know, it's, it's, it's rock star status. Especially but, the check around it. So okay, yeah. It's just I don't I don't know when when that's going to happen because I was fortunate the week before they canceled everything. I did some shows here in Florida and was able to still you know do our thing. We still had like 150 people that came out. Yeah. Um, even though we were still under the cover of darkness with this thing. Right. And you, there's always going to be a certain segment of the population that's going to say, fuck it, and come anyway. But yeah, I'm, you'd I'm like, hoping you'd, to be a part of that. <clears throat> you'd like it to be on a more national basis than just, you know, club here, club there, because then it's going to be all of us fighting over small rooms. Mm, or developing our own little secret, uh, you know, rooms that people have to come in. We'll right. see. We'll see how it how the transition is, man. But I'm glad that you have a plan behind it. You know, what I mean, uh, one of my things is to help brothers understand that we're all gonna have to add some uh, things to our our repertoire, right? Yeah, man. So I would say, you know, like I thought, you know, and how is acting gonna be now? You know, like uh, they couldn't have put Empire together with no yeah. crowds involved, right? Yeah, and you've seen some of the talk shows they're doing where these people are at home, Trevor Noah, and yeah. some of the other, some of the other. It's and it tough. sucks. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a tough watch. It's, exactly. it's a tough watch. <laughs> exactly, I know Kimmel tried it early, and man, it, it didn't last three minutes with me. I was like, click, keep sitting in there with, in his house with his kids. The first well, thing is, is we don't want to see all that wealth, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> no shit. The only thing, dude, the only thing worse than that is probably the horse challenge that was on ESPN. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That, uh, was, that was so pathetic, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, y'all really hard up now, man. Yeah, man. That's the NBA, though. They, did, they, they didn't have no way of making money unless they had us, you know, the slave quarters. No doubt. No doubt. Well. And it's you know, exposing were, it now. It was it, it, Gobert on Utah was the main reason why all the sports were shut down. Really, what what happened? He uh, the dude he was on Utah. He went to a uh, he went to a uh, oh that uh, dude the one who was like uh, oh, he was touching everything. Touching the mics, and he ended and up then, with and shit. then got one of his teammates. He gave it to as well. And then once he did that, man, that was it. My yeah. theory on it is this: the government doesn't feel like they can trust us. So that's why they're going to shut everything down. So nobody has to take a political uh, fall on this is what they're thinking. They're wrong, but that's what they're thinking. Because they don't think, they don't trust us not to do stuff. But what they found is they were projecting 200,000 deaths. Yeah. Now it's down to 60. The CDC, 60,000. The CDC director was on CNN yesterday talking about the reason for that, for their speculation on that is because we all started doing what they thought we couldn't do, which was social distancing. Right, what they thought we wouldn't do. Exactly. Yeah, my, my, um, my issues with it go a little bit further down the timeline, which is <clears throat> why were they developing a virus like this? Because we are, we've already followed the ladder and it led to it being a man-made, um, extension of a virus that was out there right then um, was it released or was it lost to the people right on the people in in China and is that by design so is it a a weapon is it a biological weapon at this point was it a biological weapon in its beginnings why should that be something that's not prosecuted heavily uh, in any way, because there should nothing, there should be, be nothing on this earth that destroys that many people, and it goes unchecked and or unleashed for no reason. 
Well, you know, in China, man, they, they're doing population control. They got over a billion Chinese there. So and you believe so you believe it was a biological weapon turned on yeah. people on purpose. The yeah, facts well do, think about it. No, think about the, it. They, SARS, yeah. Ebola, bird flu, all that shit came out of that part of the world. This and it one, all came from laboratories, uh also as we trace it back later. But so, this one is coming out of Europe. They're blaming China, but the Europeans are the ones bringing it here because China didn't lock down all of China. Italy did. Yeah, well, I um, if you do the math, and, and the math sometimes adds up to be universally true, if you look at who's less um, affected by it, you'd have to go to one of these European countries like Russia. Um, and well, they're, although, not even, they're not considered Europe, though. Yeah, but are they the are they the catalysts who actually launched this pandemic? Because they're not being affected by it. Uh, and if yeah. I'm gonna kill some people, I'm gonna kill everybody outside of my nest. Well, you know them and them in China are work together anyway. When has Russia ever really had allies that they res that they've maintained and wouldn't do anything against? Right. So, Fucking they they send us supplies. It, yeah, but what that they mean? sent us supplies. That that was to embarrass Agent Orange, though. Yeah. I mean Trump. I mean dummy. Exactly. You know, <laughs> Which yeah. your your state voted for that motherfucker. So <laughs> our state our state wouldn't even let him come here. Chicago, he was risking his life trying to come where we were. The police Dude, couldn't stop it. The police they, uh, was in on it. They on some different kind of shit down here, man. You'll you you'll ride around here and see Trump flags and Trump signs and shit. I know. I, I've dri I've driven the country since he became a um you know a president, man. I saw all that shit. In fact, I just I was astounded, man. I was astounded that they would uh that, that there were that many hidden racists that uh, they were so fearful of Obama leveling out the playing field that they would destroy themselves. Cause that's what happened. We they don't they don't care, man. They when one of them sees one of them doing it, it emboldens another one to do it. Yeah. We had a we had a situation where there was there was a Trump rally at at a at a corner intersection here in town. When mm -hmm. I rode through it, it was completely silent. Then somebody beeped like to support Trump, and then a whole bunch of people started beeping. Wow. So they're all they're all about emboldening each other. But when they're on their own by themselves, they're quiet as church mice. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, man, I'll be honest with you, I'm tired of arguing about this shit. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't have never brought it up. I'm, you I'm, I'm, to it the, up. I'm to the point where if you voted for Trump, good for you, bro. But you know what? Just don't try to put that on me, and I'm cool. Yeah. Because this is America. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, for sure. And realistically speaking, mm -hmm. I hope the dude would do a good job. Because we're supposed to be on the same team. If he fuck up, he fuck up for all of us. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's... it's Which is it's, what we see. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's exactly. fucking up for all of us. <laughs> so at this point, we got to get this motherfucker out of here. That's all I can say. Yeah, he's, I mean, at this point, I'm wondering if um, the powers that be, the one percenters or the, you know, the, the Bilderberg group, those people are not using him to be the fall guy for this destruction of the earth or this implementation of new world order. You know what I mean? Cause I would, I, I would agree with you on that. So I would agree with you. Cause he's, he's the, he's the fall guy anyway. Yeah. He's not the one to worry about. The one to worry about are the ones that support his ass who have the money. Um, he's, he, he's just the front man. Yeah. He, I think He's the salesman. I think that the ones to worry about are the ones that are that are manipulating the outcome in either way. So you got, right. you know, you got cats that gave money to both, you know, yeah. like that Bill Gates right. dude. He gave money to both Republicans and Democrats <clears throat> because he's going to be in charge anyway. Right. And if you start looking at what he's t been talking about on the internet, he's one of the main proponents of uh, population control. He brought this up in 2015 in a speech. Yeah, exactly. Two years, two years ago, uh, Agent Orange took out that Obama program that had that that had that um, department just to deal with this shit. Right. He took that shit apart. I know. So, mm -hmm. You know, 
but I don't know, man. You doing a lot of talking like you've been reading. Get us all in trouble. <laughs> I'm in Chicago. We don't fear that. <laughs> you come on up here, Mr. Slade Catcher. <laughs> How about that? How about that? We put these feet in your asses. <laughs> what kind of forever, baby? <laughs> For sure, bro. <laughs> That's it, man. So. Um, just kind of wrap this up. I don't want to keep you all day, man. I want to keep it, you know, fresh and, and I appreciate you doing it, man. So Absolutely. do you have any projects that, um, that you want to push? I know you were talking about your, uh, your thing that's coming out. This will be on the web by then, man. If you want to, you know, give people a way to find you, uh, yes. so, you know, go let, ahead. Me, let me know, where, let me know where you're going to be with this. Anytime you doing something, man, I'm in, as a matter of fact, you know, I still want to bring you down here. Yeah. Um, because uh, the, the work is here. You yeah, know? we got. I got stuff happening up here that's, you know, once we figure out that we can get people together, I'm going to be working dudes through the systems that I've been putting it in. And I've Excellent. had a uh, sponsorship from companies, you know, so. That's what's up. That's what I'm trying to build. I'm trying to build, a, as you can see, marketing, using products, using stand-up, right? Right. <clears throat> so as we get the... The, the money and the liquor companies back behind us, like in the early eighties, then right. I can, I can pay for a dude like yourself, or, you know, and make well, you know, money. man, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I was working on right before all of this happened because I had a, I had started <clears throat> not, not quite an LLC, but my own thing called LA Hardy and friends. And yeah, what I, I would that. do with bringing you in, bringing people in from all over, I host it. Y'all do your damn thing. We get paid and it's bringing people in, not necessarily at the DL Hughley level that mm. everybody can't afford, but right. people at your and my level that are yeah. funny as fuck that you are affordable to people and that will help us to get out there and help them to see us and understand yeah. comedy is not just about one big comic because you know that's how they try to do us three they at a time. To. Yeah, but the internet is changing that man because right. I would add to what you were saying is now all you got to do is start videotaping. L.A. Hardy and Friends, and now you got content that you can sell yes. and uh, make a couple extra bucks, man. I mean, you think about it, a cat like myself and you, we only need a few grand a month or a few right. grand to really survive and then build from there, and we end right. up being where we really want to be because we make the money. We make the money for the clubs. When we start uh, controlling the room and not giving all the money to the clubs, then we'll be all right. That's the deal, man. I mean, it's all about, it. I think when we come out of this, what's going to eventually happen is you're going to have a lot more entrepreneurs and a lot more people doing their own thing. But right. that's, that's ultimately what I want to do. I don't want to work for somebody else. And I'm not going to. That's right. I'm going to have, I'm going to have my own shit, whether it's franchised or whether it's a freestanding thing on its own. But we too old to start over again, man. <laughs> nah, it ain't a, you know, it ain't, nope. it ain't that, man. But in Florida, you got the name, bro. I, I watch a lot of your stuff. So oh, you thanks, should, you, I, I would say, man, look into opening up your own spot. And, you know, That's when you get up. your chicken, your chicken waffle and uh, comedy thing going, man, just find out how you can get it in your own space, your own property, and you'll be good until the grave, you know? I'm, lo I'm looking right now, and now is a good time to look because nobody else is really looking. And yeah. everybody's scared to be outside. I mean, I'm driving around on a daily basis, looking at looking at uh, commercial property, looking at small small shops that can that can handle what I'm talking about. I might even start off with a food truck first, man. I mean, I, I'm I'm so I'm so into thinking about the fact that it's gonna work that it doesn't really matter the specifics of it right now. Yeah. Because I'm I'm so big on the vibrations of making it work that it's gonna work no matter what. Well, yes, man. And on that note, I think that's the perfect way to end this thing, man. Love you, bro. And I will uh, hit you up. Uh, We're going to get some stuff going in 2020 and beyond. Yes, sir. Thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome LA Hardy. LA Hardy. Give it up for LA Hardy. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. I can't see myself not doing it. It's almost indescribable, but when you're doing it and you're in it and you're in the moment with it, there's nothing better.
Hey, remember back in the day, you go one doctor, that's it. You go in, get something done, you're in and out. Now, now, three, four doctors, then here comes a specialist to tell you what's getting ready to happen for real. And it used to be called surgery. What do they call it now? A procedure. Yeah, you know what a procedure is? It's a fancy name from the Latin procedero. It means uh, we're going to knock you out, and when you wake up, you're not going to remember anything, but your ass and your throat are going to hurt. Yes, I'm here. No need to thank me. But you should. I'm Chip Chipley. <laughs> Chip Chipley. Chip Chipley. Oh, groupies. <laughs> I deserve that. Maurice. Maurice. You should have a man cave, even when you're, when you're in a relationship. Every great superhero does. Batman, Batcave. You know where the Batcave is? Of course you don't. Why? You gotta be taken by Batman, wrapped in the Batcave, in the Batcar, to the secret location, so you don't know where it is, you can't find your way back the next time you wanna come. You go inside, I'll bet it's crazy. Robin and Alfred are both running around chasing each other in G-strings. It's crazy. Right when the show's starting, I love that. Uh, it's almost like taking off in a plane. They got you in the seatbelt and you're ready to go and then the plane's taxiing. It's just nothing like it. It's, uh, it's a true high. Superman has one too. What's he have? Uh, Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. So he can go there by himself or he could take you. It's his choice. It's his place. You know where it is? Heck no, you don't know where it is. Because you got to be taken by Superman, wrapped in a super cape to the secret location. He takes you there, takes the cape off. I'll bet you're going to be looking around. It's going to be galaxies exploding. It's going to be all kinds of crazy stuff you've never seen before because he's an illegal alien. And there's going to be craziness that you can't wait to come back and tell your friend what you saw. And he's going to bring you back to Earth wrapped in a super cape. And as soon as your feet come down and gently touch the ground, your ten tootsies hit the ground, you're ready to tell her he unfurls the cape. And all of a sudden, you can't remember anything, but your ass and your throat hurt. It's kind of like a procedure, you know? So that's a... <laughs> I love making people laugh, but I like doing something that has a little point to it, and I like being able to put out that kind of comedy. If you're black and brown and you're riding around Sarasota from now on, what you need to do is have a dog in the backseat of your car. I'm not talking about something that's going to attack people, or a pit bull, or Rottweiler. I'm talking about a little bitty dog like a puppy, a uh, piece of shih tzu, uh, you know. Little bitty dog, backseat of the car. You're riding around, all of a sudden you, woo, 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 woo. Now you're scared. Because we all are, it happens to all of us. Any person sees the cops behind him, you're already thinking, what did I do? Well, when you're black and brown, what do you do comes into, I didn't do anything, and you could still be killed. Grab the dog, put it in your lap. When the police officer walks up to your car, hold it tightly. He walks up, looks in your car, he's nervous, you're nervous. You don't know what's going to happen, he don't know what's going to happen. But all of a sudden, bang, gun goes off, kills the dog. Right, white people, you will lose your minds and this will stop tomorrow. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? You guys have been great. I'm L.A. Hardy. Thank you for having me.